Welcome Oakland County EMS providers to section 10, the special operations protocols. This is the last section of the 2024 Oakland County protocol implementation education. In this section, you're gonna find the MCI protocol. There's also a section called the special pathogen response network protocols. Those are in here. Those aren't for standard everyday use. Those are for a special response team in Oakland County. And there is also the hazmat protocols in this section. Again, those protocols are designated for the hazmat teams and not for everyday use in EMS. I'm John Toit, the EMS system manager for the Oakland County Medical Control Authority. And for this section, I have Captain Gary Proctor of the West Bloomfield Fire Department. He is their EMS coordinator, and he is our co-chair for protocols. We're in Section 10, the Special Operations Protocols. We have Gary Proctor back, the EMS coordinator for West Bloomfield Fire Department and our protocols chair, Captain Proctor. Tell us all about these protocols, starting with 10-1. No problem. Thanks, John, for having me again to do this section. Section 10-1, which is the General Seaburn Identification of Agents Protocol, really no change to this protocol at all. It's the same format, and nothing's been added or removed from it. Okay, well, maybe we can find some changes in 10-2. Well, you'd have to look really hard to find the one change in 10-2, but there is a change to 10-2, which is the chemical exposure protocol. And you'll find that about midway down in page one, where it changed from two to three puffs of the patient's inhaler to four puffs. So again, the change is from two to three to four puffs of the patient's own prescribed inhaler. That's the only change to that protocol. Great. That's pretty easy. All right. How about 10-3, the nerve agent organophosphate pesticide exposure treatment protocol. So yeah, so 10-3, it looks like there's a lot of changes to this one as you look at the highlighted sections here, but really all it is is an addition. What we've done here is we've added some definitions of some medications in here. So that's the big change to this particular one. And again, you'll find that on page one there. The only other change to this protocol is that it looks the same it's just formatted slightly different and again you'll see references to other protocols in here that have not only the protocol name but the associated protocol number with it that's the big changes for this one how about that chempac med run protocol 10-4 so 10-4 the chempac med run i don't know of anybody who's ever had to use this one fortunately the additions to this one are the addition of the chart in Appendix A and an additional form that's been added to it. And those are the only real changes to this particular protocol. Well, so far, this section's pretty easy. Yeah, it looks kind of daunting when you look at the size of this protocol section, but there haven't been a lot of changes to it. 10.5, our cyanide exposure, this one has a little bit more substance in as far as changes. On page one there under assessment, you'll see that they've added hypotension as one of the assessment things that you need to take care of. If you go down a little bit further, you'll see the next couple of changes in there where they talk about cardiac or respiratory arrest. Again, hypotension with the systolic blood pressure, which they define there, along with a GCS in there. When you get into page two here, you'll see under patient management, the cold zone, they've added a little bit there under bullet point number one. And then the big change to this page here is that they've added the instructions for the cyano kit. You'll also see that they've removed one of the previous treatments in here as well. But the big change here is those instructions for the cyano kit. So if you have that available to you, this is where you're going to go to find those instructions if you don't have them with your cyano kit. Gary, wasn't that treatment sodium theophosphate? It was. That's the one that they removed from it. Okay. I don't know if I've ever given that, and I think it's part of the hazmat kit. This protocol was part of the hazmat protocols, and it was moved out into a more general section for use. 
One of the big changes to this particular protocol and why they moved it is from the hazmat protocols out into a general special operations protocol is because agencies have that ability to carry the cyano kits now themselves. You have a patient who's been exposed to the products of combustion from a structure fire or something like that. You don't have to rely on a hazmat team responding with the cyano kits. A lot of agencies will have them themselves. So it's a great reference for that. You'll also find on page three of this particular protocol, the cyano kit administration chart, which is awesome. If you are carrying a cyano kit, I would recommend that you print this particular page out, laminate it, and put it with your cyano kit because it breaks down all the dosing right there for you. Excellent. And hazmat team members, you'll have to look here for this protocol now, but I think that's a good change. Yeah, absolutely. 10.6 mass casualty incident. So SALT is replacing our old START triage. So if you remember for oh, as long as I can think back in my career here, we've always used a START triage or some variation of it. A lot of thought has gone into whether that's really been an effective system or not. And the consensus seems to be that it wasn't the most effective triage system we can use. So the entire state now is changing to this SALT triage. So make sure that you spend a little bit of time reviewing what SALT is. The other change that you'll find in this particular protocol is that one, all of our area hospitals in our medical control authority can still accept those two initial patients of whatever priority they might be so that you're not overloading one particular hospital right off the bat in an MCI. But what you'll find is that the list that we used to have in here of who can take how many has been removed. That's not to say that this list isn't going to come back at some point. The protocol committee is going to be reviewing this protocol again a little bit more in depth, and we're going to see if we can't revive that list and put it back in here so that if you do happen to have an MCI, you've got that information readily available right there at your fingertips. Protocol 107 pre hospital EMS MCA mutual aid during disaster protocol. So this is a good protocol to quickly read through to make sure that you understand that it's there, but it really doesn't have a whole lot to do with day-to-day -day operations. Even if you do end up in some sort of MCI where you're crossing over borders, this is what kind of gives us the permission, if you will, to do that and do treatments and how we're covered. So it's good to review it, but otherwise it really has not a whole lot of relevance to the street medic. The Hazard Contaminated Patient Protocol, Protocol 10-8. 10-8, this was a protocol that we've had for a while. It used to be Protocol 7.4. So really, the only change in this protocol is that it went from 7.4 to 10-8. Other than that, it's the same protocol that we've had for quite some time. And from 10-9 really on, there's no changes in these protocols, is there? No, there isn't. Everything else from, like you said, from 10.9 right up through 10.17 is the same. What you'll find now is that there's a 10.18, but this is once we get into that special pathogens response network. So any of those SPRN protocols really should be reviewed by the agencies and the personnel in those agencies that may be charged with transporting patients that meet the SPRN protocols. So take a look at those. But again, 10.18 is a new protocol in the SPRN suite, if you will. If you're in one of those couple of agencies that have agreed to transport SPRN patients, please make sure that you take a couple of minutes to review all of those protocols and you have a good understanding of what it is that they mean and how they affect you. So you think as an administrator, if I don't really know what SPRN means, I'm probably not an agency that does this? That would be a good assumption. All right, great. So the only other change to Section 10 here is that you'll find the general hazmat treatment protocols are now in Section 10. They used to be Section 11. The other thing that we changed in them, and these are the only changes to these protocols, is that we renumbered them. So anything that is Oakland County specific, because we did adopt a lot of state protocols and didn't want to change that numbering system, everything that is Oakland County specific will now be whatever protocol section they're in, dash 
100, starting at 100 and moving on up until we get through all the Oakland County specific ones. This particular one, it starts out at 10-100 and then moves on through 10-112. Well, that's section 10. And as I'm just kind of slowly rolling through these, that really covers it. And this was the section that everybody was looking for. And what's that section? The last section. I hope you all enjoyed the protocol review. And again, if you find any issues with these protocols, let us know. If you find contradictions, let us know so that we can address them. Gary, thanks for coming. Thanks, John. I appreciate it. Thank you, Oakland County EMS providers, for all that you do. I hope that these protocol education sessions were helpful. If you have any questions, contact qi at ocmca.org. Thank you.